righty. Good to go. All right, let me Wait. minimize this. Um, I'm going to try to find my way back to... Okay, cool. Give me one second. You're good. And then we'll get this show on the road. Literally. Um, yeah, for those just tuning in, uh, I know that we do normally... Um, we do broadcast the spare note show Saturday night, but I had some last minute stuff come up. It it was good. You canceled because jukebox had a, had a crash in the middle of the recording. So we went oh, really? like, we went, we normally do jukebox before. And yeah. So luckily we didn't lose anything, but maybe a sentence or two. Right. Mm -hmm. But I had to patch two feeds together after the show, which was not fun. So. Because I, I had to restart the recording when it crashed. Yeah, that um, I had some technical issues on the regular show um, this week as well with uh, with Glenn yeah, and Josh at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. Um, I they think were frozen. It, right. Yeah. I don't know. Like my. On my end. It seemed like it was on their end, but they were both doing it. So I don't know if it was my feed for whatever reason. I normally always have a nice, great, crystal clear feed. But, um, yeah, for some reason or another, uh, we had some some audio difficulty. And I apologize for that. I sincerely do because I'm very um, anal about it, for lack of a better term. Um, so, again, I do apologize to those we're trying to enjoy the show. Um, it, it's on me at the end of the day, but. Alrighty, I think we're almost ready to go here. Um, doo -doo -doo. Now your show, <clears throat> the uh, Coop show this week, you had um, well, one of your shows, you had a very interesting guest. You had, um, Brian from Provada yep. Cigar Club. Yep. Um, hold on one second. Ready. All right. So we are ready to roll. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Spare Note Show. My name is Matt Tobacco from SmokerTobacco.com, and I am joined once again by my very good friend, Mr. William Cooper of CigarCoop.com. Uh, and this is the 11th episode of the Spare Note series. Uh, very excited to be here, as always. Um, again, scheduling um kind of didn't work out for us yesterday so we made a little bit of a last minute change um but it sounds like it was a big benefit to the coop team so um there is that and um we had a very interesting week both of us you and i yeah uh, we had some interesting shows with some very interesting people mm -hmm. um let's start with yours okay. and then we'll, we can kind of bounce over to, to, to mine um because they're both kind of interesting topics right um, and I know that you probably have some things you want to talk about in terms of what kind of went on with my show this week. Um, mm -hmm. yep. I think there's some things that came up that you also uh, were interested in. I think there's some questions I asked that were also questions of yours. So right. we can definitely dive into that. I think that'd be a great conversation. Right. right. Um, but with your show, you had Brian on from Provada Cigar Club. Yes, we did. Um, now, not to kind of like be like the interview to you because we both kind of co-host the show together but i'm gonna put yeah that's you... fine and that's fine no you, you can ask away like that i'm gonna, I'm gonna put you in that sh in that seat really quick so okay. what's interesting is you have been 
I don't want to say it's a secret because, I mean, you bring up stuff on the air, but you've been very, very critical of Bravado Cigar Club. Um, but I know your stance is, you know, still it's all respect and, you know, people want right. to come on the show and all that. Right. That's, that's, that's totally understandable. Uh, and that's the way it should be. Um, but you have been very critical of Pravada. Right. That you had Brian on. Um, I caught a good amount of the show and there's, other, there's some other stuff that I saw online too, that I'll, I'll bring up after. Right. Um, but now that that shows up, so what, after you did that show, what was kind of your takeaway after having that conversation with him? Well, okay. So there's, there's two things that happened on that show. There was an unfortunate incident that I had to edit out and I can get to that. Mm -hmm. And then there was the rest of the interview. Right. Um, and unfortunately the story became on what was edited out. Um, but let's just talk about the rest of the interview first. So yes, I have been critical of Brian, uh, Brian and I have been, um, let's put it this, we've, we've been butting heads. Um, but in fairness, Brian reached out to me to try to, to mend the fences and uh, we put an olive branch out there. And I think it was, I think it was great. They put an olive branch out there. Um, he agreed to come on our show, which is really good. And there's a lot I learned about Pravada Cigar Club uh, and Brian in particular. The guy, the guy really does love cigars. Um, he's building something unique and that doesn't, I don't change my, my, my feelings there are exactly the same. I have Aaron and I have had issues on the whole parody and trademark things. That's a that's a very sensitive issue, at least with me. Um, I've talked about it on this show. That hasn't changed, but that gave Brian a chance to have a forum out there and give his point of view. And I haven't changed my opinion on that. We disagree on that, but that that was what was out there. Mm -hmm. Now there are people who said I should not have given him a forum. Um, no, he deserves a forum. And look, guess what? I don't regret giving him a forum. There are people saying I was soft on him in the first part of the interview. You want to say I, I put some positives out there on the guy? That's fine. Um, but I, I stand by that. But the part that was edited out was something that would seem to be the story of this whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. And it was basically there was a point where Brian made some comments on Abe that I felt crossed the line in terms of what needs to be on our, on our podcast. Uh, when I went back and listened to it, I felt it was in violation of the code of ethics, which if you go to the about menu on Cigar Coop, you can read the code of ethics. Mm -hmm. And I'm not blaming Brian or anything, but, you know, the, he, things got hot, things got heated, things were said, they're not going to be said on my show. And it was eliminated. And if, and if people are upset at me for eliminating uh, a five, four or five minute piece for almost a three hour interview, then I would say that this is what I'm going to say, don't listen to my show anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because that's not going to be the point. But I think there was a lot of other things in there. It's a controversial interview. It's a polarizing interview for sure. Um, and uh, I, thank, I thank Brian for doing it is what I'm going to say. And it, it, here's the last thing I'll say, uh, Matt. If people had an issue with me doing this interview, where were, where were they with the time we were promoting this to lead up? Because I didn't hear any. Uh, I, I heard from one person. That's it. I, there was one person I did hear from. But if all these other people are really upset about me giving Brian a, a platform, then I would just say, um, why wasn't I told about it ahead of time? I think that was all very well said. Yep. <clears throat> um, I would agree. I mean, when it comes to what we do, you know, it, it is journalism. Yep. Um, it's not giving them a platform. It's journal. You, you nailed it right there. It's journalism. Exactly. And regardless of what the people who don't do this will right. say, right. Um, if you disagree, you're wrong because that's right. what it is. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to debate it with you. Uh, you want to send me a DM, wh whatever. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to listen to you. Uh, cause I don't have time to, to fight with people over it, but it, that's, is what it is. Yeah. Um, you know, there's been people who, who like, Oh, well, the bloggers on the podcast, well, it's journalism. That, that's what it is. Yeah. It's just well, like any other kind of journalism <laughs> in any kind of other, in, other industry or whether right. it's the general, you know, yeah. news of God knows whatever happens in the world. It's the same thing. You're reporting yeah. on stuff that's happening. Um, ours is just specific to our industry. It's the same thing. So when it comes to that situation, you know, I think that he had, he does have a lot of, um, he has a lot of supporters and people who, who do like him and on his side. He mm -hmm. also has a lot of people who, who dislike him, right? Not on his side. I think that can be said about um, 
a lot of people. I think in his uh, situation, he kind of stands out a little bit more and therefore right. it is a little bit, like you said, it's very polarizing. Yep. Um, so definitely there is a lot of praise and then there's a lot of hate. Um, either way, it still should be covered regardless of whether, you know, right. we don't like someone. Right. Um, and, and it's usually very, very, very rarely, if that's even the case, that it's personal. It's usually more on just kind of the way that they've right. conducted business and how it's affected the industry, um, which I think for most of us who dislike him, I would say that would be the answer to why, like, uh, like in terms of media and people and all that, I think right. that's why they would dislike him. Uh, the people who do like him, I would say that it would be because, you know, they just, they like what he's doing. Right. They agree with what he does. And everyone's right. entitled to their own opinion. And everyone's totally, entitled totally to there. like yeah. or dislike yeah. whoever they want. So that is fair. And I yeah. think what you did was right. Um, you know, you had him on. That's fair. There's no reason to just be like, no, you, you're not allowed on my show. Right. The only time right. I would say that that would happen is if someone's already been on and they were right. and they did something that was yep. very inexcusable and it's like you know what the last time you were on you know what i just can't do it again that's right that's fair you burn a bridge you burn a bridge but right. um it, go ahead. Matt, I, yeah go ahead. if i'm guilty of maybe letting that that piece that happened with abe go it shouldn't have gone i agree that was my mistake um you know he, he you got a lot of things going on there but that won't have there are now controls in place with our guests going forward um, that that will never happen again, I can assure you. So um, for those who didn't hear what was said, would you want to repeat what was said or do you not want to bring it up? I, out of respect to Abe, I'm not going to re repeat it up. Um, That's fair. And I'll tell you something else. Uh, someone actually went and decided they were going to post those five minutes anyway on YouTube. And they are now uh, the victim of a copyright strike. So, um, <laughs> so, you know, I, out of respect to Abe, I'm not going to do it. But what I will say is, um, I don't care if I like or hate a guest, um, I, you know, or like or hate a person. I won't allow any, you know, I just won't allow that to happen. I just can't allow that to happen, unfortunately. Um, and uh, I don't hold it. Look, it, it actually has happened a few other times before. It just hadn't, it wasn't as, in the, kind of as much of a controversial interview. So it has happened is what I'm saying. And, but now it's not going to happen because there's controls that are being put in place to go forward. Uh, that, that won't happen. If, and if people are really disappointed uh, in the primetime show on that, um, they're, they're watching the wrong show. This ain't the type of show. This is not going to be that type of show. Um, is what, 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 you know, we, and we, we want everyone to feel like they could be respected. And that includes the guest and the audience as well. So I shouldn't have someone in the audience that has listened to this. Oh my God. You know, it, it's just, it's just not, not the case. And I, I got a lot of stuff on freedom of the press. No, it, it's censorship. Guess what? Yeah. I censored it. If you don't like it, that that's, that's just cause you know, I, I can't, I can't do that. And I'm, I'm, I apologize to anyone who did. Um, and I apologize to Abe and I apologize to a few other people. There's a few people who are upset at me over this in the industry. They'll get, you know, and was I, Abe I, upset with you about it. He was upset, not upset at me. Uh, okay. Per se. Uh, Abe and I talked, because Abe's like, you got to go back and listen to that. Right. And then when I went back to listen to it, it was a no brainer. I'm like, Abe, sorry, I'm going to fix this. So, you yeah. know, not enough for nothing. I'll, I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to stick up for Abe. Um, uh, I love him. You know, he, he's a friend. Um, he's a very good friend. Yeah, he's a very he's good a very, person. He's a, he's a very good person. He's a very good friend to both of us. Uh, yep. We, you know, we've both spent time with him, worked with yep. him. Um, you know, he, he runs a he runs a great business. He does a great job. Very innovative. Um, he's a smart guy. Yeah. You know, he knows how to make money. At the end of the day, when you run a business, that's what it's all about. Yep. Um, but yeah, and he also he's a great guy. Is yeah. he very honest? And he'll tell you how it is. Absolutely. But I'd rather have that than someone who's lurking behind my back. And, yeah. Uh, he's a straight shooter. Um, he works hard. And he's very, he's a very kind guy. Yeah. Uh, I think some people might sometimes like get confused with, he, he's very, he's very honest. That's why he's called honest Abe, but yeah. don't confuse that. He's a very kind person and he cares yeah. about people and he's very generous. Um, so anyone who would say anything, um, you know, that bad about him, uh, it, I, I would disagree and it, and it is uncalled for. And it, is it, a it, shot. it can't, it can't happen. Um, it can't and, happen. Uh, and it's not, it, it's not appropriate. If you did it, Matt, I, I, I'd knock your segment off and I'm sure you'd do the same with me. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, look, I understand there's people who are upset about that. 
and, and I'm sorry. I think there's a lot of good content in that interview. I don't think you're missing one beat because that content was eliminated because mm-hmm. you, because someone is upset that they want to hear a rant. Okay. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But most people, I think a lot of industry people respected what I did too. So, um, it, you move on, you learn from it. Um, and, uh, there's a lot I've learned from that and I stand by, you know, what we, what we, what the, the having them on the, on the show is what I'll say. And here's the last thing, Matt. And I don't mean the, no, if okay. anyone thought that Brian and I were going to convince the other person on our position of parodies and copyrights, that Brian knew we were going to ask these questions. Just, you know, there was no surprise with that, but there was no way we were going to convince the other side to flip, but we, we wanted to give him a chance to have his say. And, you know, there were some counterpoints back and forth on that. So that's, that's, that's it. As far as that goes. Um, sorry, Nicole actually just decided to creep out here and join. If, if you want the other chair, you can have it. It's okay. She's trying to be all like, no, I'm not here. It's okay. And it's, yep. I don't know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, weird. <laughs> no, I mean, I agree. I think, you, I think, and I think you did the right thing by editing out. Um, look, my, my take on it is, uh, I'm not a fan of Provada Cigar Club. And when I say that before everyone attacks me, I'm going to explain to you why I gave them a fair chance. I subscribed. I got one in the mail. Um, I thought that it was okay. Um, I, I wasn't really, I just really wasn't crazy with the way it was done. Um, I, I've, I've had, I don't really, I don't have any longstanding subscriptions to any of these, you know, s- subscribe based things. Uh, I don't either. I, I don't, I don't, and I don't think of me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need to. Um, it, that's not to say that I don't think that they're good. I think there's a lot of good ones. Um, I just, I don't, really need that and I, honestly i don't have time for it because i'm already smoking so many other things and whatnot I, it's just I, I never really abes right for example the the connoisseur club with the five unbanded cigars i love that i do and i did it for a few months but i was just like i don't have time right. to keep up with it yeah and i knew the spots were limited so i did cancel my membership but it wasn't because i didn't like it i wanted someone who really wanted to be into it yeah um have have that space because I wanted someone to get more out of it than I had the time for. Um, but I still think that Abe and everyone that's smoking, I think they did a tremendous job with that. And I think it's a really, really fucking awesome idea. Uh, and they, they do a great job with that. So th- there's that. Um, I just, I don't know. The Pravada one, it, it, it just, it really didn't wow me. I wasn't really crazy about it. I didn't think that um, it, when I did it, I don't remember what I, I remember. There was like a Colorado Claro specialty in there, which was like, wow, that's interesting. Um, but then there was like just two unbanded cigars. Uh, it was okay. I, 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 I wouldn't say it's trash. I'm not going to say that. It just, no, I don't no, know. I had a very good cigar from them. Yeah. I, I, agree. I, yeah, I it just, I don't know. I just, it just uh, didn't really excite me. Um, and that's just my honest opinion. Um, you know, I've tried all of most of them luxury cigar club. That one's really cool. I guess I've, I've told you I, I I've done Abe's. Those are really cool. Um, you know, the, there, there's some good ones. They all have their own thing. They're all a little bit different. You know, my honest opinion, respectfully, just it didn't wow me. And that's okay. Um, now, when it comes to Brian as a person, uh, we've talked a lot about some of the releases that he's done um, on the show before, this show, a few times. Um, so you already kind of know, if you've been listening along, you already kind of know like where we kind of stand on that. Some of the ideas and like with some of the names and the bands and stuff. We kind of disagree on, um, and t- when I say that, I mean, Coop and I disagree with, with, uh, Provider on that. Um, you know, especially like there's some real trademark careful things that he's done. Um, you know, like the, the, what was that one that we, that just came out that we were just talking about that was it the Dunkin' Donuts looking one that he did Yeah, at him. Yeah. It was that one. Uh, he did the Sigabun, I believe that was the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I get it. I get it. I'm going to say, like, I get it. I understand, like, the, the, the idea process. Um, I just disagree with it, um, as does Coop, just for a, a long range of reasons. And we've, we've, we've covered that. So I'm not going to waste too much time going into that. Um, what I will say just kind of rubbed me a little the wrong way. I saw this video that he put out online um i don't remember where i saw it but i I saw it online it was it was this week it was after he had you had him on the show 
and it was him talking to the camera and it was very self, you know, um, what, what's the, what's the term I'm looking for? Um, self-inflating. It was uh-huh. just very, it was just all about him and like how wonderful he is and this. And I'm like, okay, okay. Um, and then I saw some of the videos that he put on social media. I saw the video he put on where he kind of wanted to knock you for editing that video. And he kind of, like, he kind of, yeah, but he a podcast, but you know, um, I don't know, and he has a right, and he has a right, by the way. I'm not upset about that. Um, and I get that too. I, and, I, and I would probably I get that too. I, I don't yeah, know if I, I would it. make a video and put it online he, about he, it. He, well, you know what? I, 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 here I'll defend him on that. And people may disagree. He communicates with his, with his people. And if, if and that was true. a big, and, and look, that made a mark is what I'm going to say. That interview, obviously people did. And he has a right to, to do that. And I was, you know, I can understand that. I could totally understand that. Um, and, w- and what I will say too, to, to, to add yeah. to that is the fact of matter, when you look at just the way he set up a business model, uh-huh. it, like he, he's getting people to subscribe, he's doing business. So you can't knock him for you that. Can't. It's not like he's not doing business. He's but, doing for what he wants to do but, a good job. He, he has people who watch him. He has people who subscribe and that's great. You know, he is running a business. So I will say that he's done a good job with that. He does a great job with communication. He knows how to get people together. Right. Those are all very important things yeah. that you should do. I'll give him that. It's just a few of the things that he has said. And I just, I disagree with, I don't, I don't hate the guy. I really don't. I don't either. He was, uh, he gave us a lot of time on that show. Yeah. Uh, and despite the fact people may be upset at me that he got time. Look, he still did. Um, I hear what everyone's saying from both sides. I respect everyone, what they're saying from both sides on that. Um, hey, Matt, the other thing I want to just mention, because this is this is a criticism I got from some of the Pravada folks. And I think it's a you know, it's a valid it's something I want to just mention. So mm-hmm. I've been accused of not giving Pravada enough news coverage. OK. OK. Um, and that is absolutely true. It has not. Well, there's two things. OK. First, as far as parody stuff, I stay away from it completely. Um, so because there's. I don't want to have to be told months later to take down an article or something like that. But they make a lot of stuff that's not priority, right? Um, but the reason is, you know, these releases, they're, they're gone within a few days. And for me to put effort into writing a story on something that's going to be gone in a few days, it doesn't carry enough. It just doesn't carry things enough um, where, you know, two years from now, I don't think people are going to be searching for this type of stuff, right? Yeah. And I've noticed just over the years, what's, you know, there's certain brands that people search for five, six, seven years later. So people are still going to my AJ Fernandez New World article quite a bit. So so that's the reason for that. It's not a Pravada specific thing. It's in general, these very small micro batches that go quick. There's no upside for me in terms of web traffic with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've kind of talked about that before a little yeah. bit too. Yeah. Um, so again, a little bit of rehashing, but. You know, I wanted to bring it up because yeah. I, thought, I thought it was important. And again, I just want to clarify, yeah. you know, I, I want to say that I believe, and I think I can speak for you on this. We don't hate the guy. Um, there's a lot of things that I think he's done right. And he's done a good job on and uh-huh. he deserves that. There are things that we disagree with and that's okay too. But yep. we're not yep. out here. We're not on, this is not a smear campaign either. And I, I just, no, it's not, it's not. And like I said, no. uh, I know that some people were upset. I had him on. Um, at the same time, I do respect the fact that Brian gave us time. You can, in the end, you as the audience member, you get to decide how that went. Okay, That's yeah. you guys that will get to decide that. I, I'm not going to spin you anyway, one way or another. You can hate it and that's fine. And that's what, we, you know, we get the feedback and then we evaluate it. That's the, but that's, it's not my job to kind of make him shine. It's not my job to make him look like crap. So <laughs> that's how it is. You know, if, if he, if he came to me and said like, Hey, like, I want to come on, I'd be like, okay, that's yeah, fine. And I, I would, and I would tell him too, be like, Hey, just, you know, uh, because, you know, and I'm sure he's aware of it. Yeah. Like, Hey, I'm going to ask you some questions that people generally like are going to want answers to that maybe yeah. are a little bit, right. you know, hot seat questions. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm sure he would probably be like, I get it. And that's fine. And I would, but I would give him that warning. You know, I wouldn't put him like, all right, so let me ask you some like questions that put you really on the spot or try to make you look. No, I would be like, this is like, I'm going to talk about this. Yeah. And that way, if he's like, I don't want to talk about it. I'd be like, okay, no problem. Yeah, and I yeah. won't bring it up. Cause that's yeah. how, and that's how I do it with many of my guests. You know, I'll be like, yeah. Hey, we're going to talk about this. And there's been times where you're like, you know what? I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. No problem. 
Uh, there was a situation that happened with, with someone that we both know very well, uh, a brand owner that we're both, um, we know pretty well. And he said to me before he came on recently, Hey, can you not bring up this thing that I'm doing? Uh, cause it's just kind of complicated with some other things I'm working on. I said, yeah, no problem. No, no problem at all. Um, you know, there was a retailer that came on, uh, that was kind of in the middle of something online last year. And I said, do you want me to bring it up or should I not bring it up or what? Don't bring it up. I don't want to give it more airtime. No problem. It's fine. Yep. Yep. Uh, and I do ask people about stuff like that because sometimes when they come on the show, they're looking for that opportunity to bring that up to, to like get their, their, uh, right. their, their, their side across. And right. I get that too. So I always ask like, do you want to bring up this controversy so you can air it out? Or do you just not want to talk about yep. it? And that's yep. like the best way to do it. So especially the people like Brian who have a lot of, um, people with questions about certain things he does or, or a lot of uh, criticisms of what he does always want to make sure that they know ahead of time um, because we are not yeah. trying to make them look bad. It's no, no, it was clear the air for them. It's the clear air to give them a voice to say what they what it's to give them their voice, to give their point of view. And I, some people don't like in the industry, don't like the fact I did that. Right. Mm -hmm. Or Aaron and I both did it, but what it put, what it does is it, it allows, you as the end consumer of our media content to decide. Um, so, and, you know, I really didn't talk much about this afterwards because again, I wanted to respect all the sides here on this. Uh, and I thought the interviews stood for itself. Basically you could watch it and make a decision. I think so too. Uh, and I think that everyone did a good job. I think he did a good job coming on your show. I mean, I, I, th I think it was solid. Yeah. yeah, there was, there was certain points in it, but it was still a solid show. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, and that's it. That's all I have to say. I yeah. wanted to bring it up though, just because yep. I felt like there was some things that yep. needed but, uh, to talk about, but yep. again, nothing, you know, no attacks being made. Oh, go to the about page the, uh, and the, the about, the about menu and code of ethics. You can read our code of ethics. And by the way, this has been done with comments on social media, comments on our webpage. It's consistent with, mm -hmm. with, with the values uh, that I've done on this website from day one. So th this is, if, if you're upset about this, you probably really, have, you're probably new to us and I'm sorry, but that's how we've done it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, again, um, yeah. well said, yeah. um, but moving on to other topics. So Absolutely. When, it, when it came to my show this week on the smoky tobacco show, um, flew solo for that one, but I had, uh, Josh Aversky and Glenn loop from the premium cigar association come on the show and um, in an episode that I titled, Is the Cigar Industry in Serious Trouble? Uh, and you can read all about it or watch it if you'd like to uh, on social media, whether it's YouTube or Facebook, or you can subscribe and listen to us on all the podcast platforms. Um, you know, there were some interesting things that I, I brought up that I think some of us in the media um, have all been feeling. Right. Uh, some questions that we wanted to ask. No, and those two are in the government affairs side of the premium cigar association. Yep. So yep. they are the people you want to ask these questions to. Right. Um, you know, not that someone like Scott Pierce wouldn't be qualified. Um, it's just kind of like, this is a little bit more focused on what they do. Right. Um, right. So Scott, it, which also Scott does a great job. It, it's kind of just in a different role. Um, so I wanted to really bring these up with these, with these two uh, fine gentlemen. Uh huh. Uh, first thing is first. Uh, and I know this is one that you, had a little bit of vested interest in um the tobacco 21 stance uh there was a question of why did the pca not fight harder for tobacco 21 and i'm not right. sure if you caught the whole episode if you heard yeah the i have yep okay so you remember what was said um i'm gonna let you respond to that because i know this is one that you definitely were you wanted an answer to as well um but basically the gist of it was um you know, they, they felt that, you know, they the average cigar smoker doesn't start until like age 30 or so. And, uh, that's kind of how the conversation began. And right away I was like, okay, I see the logic, but at the same time, it's like anything you give them, you're not going to get it back. And you give them some now because you're like, well, you know, we can afford to give that up. And then they're like, all right, well, why don't we go for 25? 
or something worse. Yep. Which we also got into. Right. Uh, that being, uh, and I'm going to put these two together because they're kind of related. And that is where certain parts of the world, and now it has come to the United States right here in Brookline, Massachusetts, my few, the next few towns over. Um, there is a concept where people born after a certain date, yep, certain year, regardless of how old they ever become, will never be able to buy a tobacco product. So if you were born, for example, if the cutoff year is 2002, right? Even when you're 30 years old, it's, a, it's like what they're doing in New Zealand. It's the same they'll thing. They'll say, nope, you can't have it. You yeah. were born in 2002. Or you were born in 2004, right? Like, well, what do you mean? I'm 30 years old. Uh, well, you were born after the cutoff, so you're not allowed to buy anything tobacco-related anymore. And it's like, are you serious? But the guy who's five years older than you could still come in and buy whatever he wants. It's another way that people are trying to take it away, eliminate the industry limit you know everybody you know business consumers from being involved with tobacco products and it's it is scary because we're starting to see it emerge in the world and it's like wow um okay uh, we, i mean the, we, there was talks of like oh tobacco age being bumped up to like 25 or whatever now it's like why don't we just go all the way we'll just eliminate it for people altogether. um which that alone is a separate issue that I think the PCA is, is looking at differently than they did with Tobacco 21. Um, but I'm going to let you say your piece on it because I, I know you have some things you probably want to address with it. Yeah, I look, I've been around the horn with those guys, particularly Glenn on this many times. Uh, I didn't hear anything different that I hadn't heard before on that. Uh, we disagree, okay? Um, it, was for, it was a flawed approach from day one to, uh, to ignore the Tobacco 21 issue. Now, I do believe... I understand what they're saying about the adult product and stuff like that. So I, I get that, but um, I don't think they needed to lobby and do a lot with this. When This is where I think they needed to create awareness beyond half wheel and myself reporting on these things. Mm-hmm. And we reported a lot of both of us didn't report extensively on the tobacco 21. So it was nothing done on it. There was nothing to create awareness that this was going on. So when, at the end of 2000, a couple of years ago, when it got into that, that end of year omnibus thing or whatever, mm-hmm. everyone was like, why did this happen? Well, why didn't, I didn't know this was going on, you know? You know, because if they lived in a state that didn't go to Tobacco 21, they understood it. And I understand the other thing. I understand that the cigar industry should have taken this on by themselves. But now you are having this de facto prohibition tactic that's going on in New Zealand. You mentioned it in Massachusetts. They tried it in Hawaii. And guess what? It's going to happen again and again and again in the U.S. And why? Because you basically you basically let you let the anti-tobacco people steamroll you on Tobacco 21, steamroll you. Okay. we looked like we looked like we lied down. We put our guns and lied down with that one. That's how there was no fight. And I'm not going to blame the associations. Where are all the other people in the industry standing up for this? Um, Where are all these other manufacturers? Where were they? Where were the retailers in the middle of this? So it's unfair to blame Josh and Glenn for all this, right? Because I think as an industry, we need to look in the mirror and say we fucked up. Well, no I agree. Yeah. I agree. I mean, yeah. I, I think that that yeah. one was a, an easy win for them, and it shouldn't have been. Uh, it shouldn't have been that easy. It it, um, it, it, it shouldn't have been. It shouldn't have been. It shouldn't. Have, we, I wrote an article how easy it was. It was like we put these articles up and no one would say anything like, you know, California, New York, all these states that are falling down like dominoes. No one says anything like, oh, yeah. But when it got into the federal bill and it got passed overnight, then it, then the shit got real is what happened. Yeah, I remember. I remember when it went into effect in New Hampshire. I was in the shop like yeah. a day or two after that. And I remember this 19 year old kid came in a regular of the shop and they went Mm-mm, sorry yep and he had no idea he's like what, what what are you talking about and they told him like well now this the new law is it's 21 now i'm yep. sorry yep. and, and that, that kid was like are you are you serious yes like, like yeah no unfortunately trust me we're not happy about it either they were yep. in the shop was you could feel it i mean they were like yep. they just they felt like shit just bringing it up and they don't want to no, you they know, don't want to. It, exactly. You know, it's it's, it's it's the law now, and it's like, well, yeah. I have no choice. You know, I, I yeah. right. I mean, it, it's 
it was just it was uh, it was a very it was a very uncomfortable thing to experience even though i'm well over the age of 21 and yeah. i was at the time um it, it still hurt to see that happen oh it it did it felt bad for that kid it's not fair it, kid just it's not fair but the, the, re- the, re- the retail is doing his job too he has to do that mm-hmm. um Look, and by the way, two retailers that absolutely came out against Tobacco 21 were Dave Garofalo and Jeff Borchowitz, uh, and, and they should be on the record. But and, I know, and this and this happened in one of Dave Garofalo's shops. And and Dave Garofalo is gonna he might disagree with the law, but guess what? He's not gonna break the law. He, he's an honest guy, right? With that, so uh, good for Dave on on that one. Um, for for uh, you know, I give him I give him credit on that one, but but yeah, it, uh, you know, now I think. If you've noticed, though, PCA, and I don't remember if this was said in the interview, you could tell me, they have been kind of taking the stance, we are against Tobacco 25. That now is, now now it's a little, which they never came out and said we're against Tobacco 21, but now I've heard them say in some sort of form, they are against Tobacco 25 and they're committed to not letting that happen. Well, the way I would look at it is, or my comment on it would be this. What happened with Tobacco 21, it, it, it's already over. It's, it's, it's over, yeah. We there's can't nothing we can do about it now. Right. But going forward, yeah, no more concession. I don't no care. More. I don't care if they want to just push it to 22. Don't, no. Don't do it. Don't do this, it. This is, uh, no. Because every time you yeah. give them some, they just want to keep bumping it up higher. No. Draw the line <laughs> in the sand yeah. and, and nope, we're not doing it. And make sure that it does not happen. Yeah. So, you know, I have, I had two kids affected by this. My two, my, my son, Peter, and my son, Steven had the uh, right to buy tobacco products taken away from them. And they, now they, now they both have turned 21. They've gotten it back, but they had that, they had that right. They had a legal right taken away from them. And, you know, from talking to them and some of their friends, uh, Timmy, my oldest son is the guy who smokes cigars. Steve and Peter really don't, but you know, what happens is there's not much interest if they have to go through hoops to get this stuff. So they move on to something else. Like, exactly. You know. So you want to, I think, why wouldn't you want to get that 20 to 20, you know, the 21 year old person, the 20 to 18 to 20 year old person excited about like our products and our, and our industry, like, and our culture, you know? And, you know, as you get older, it's harder sometimes to get someone interested in something like that. So it's, a, it's, a, it was a flawed strategy from day one, but it didn't have to be, we had to spend millions of dollars on this. No. It, it just had to be that we're just come out and say, we're against this. We don't want this happening. Contact your local Congress. We, we have the alert system. Just do that. It was, it was, they didn't even do that. They lied down instead. Yeah. I mean, it, it yeah. was, um, yeah. it was unfortunate the way that that unfolded. Cause if the retailers went nuts on this, right. They would have, they would have done something like that, but the, that's why I don't blame. This is not a Josh Glenn PCA CRA thing. This went yeah. more beyond. This was the whole industry that really let this happen. There's more retailers than there are members of DCA. Sure, sure. So it's like your strength is in where numbers. The, where the, the retailers, retailers band yeah. together and be like, yeah. you know, there's thousands of retailers in the United States, big, small, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, they all needed to get together on that and be like, huh, fuck no. Are you serious? We're going to lose business. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Um, that's what it is. I mean, yeah. Yeah. and I bet you this would never, this would never happen. Never happen. But if all of a sudden they wanted to raise the alcohol age from 21 to 25, oh boy, I you, will bet you every liquor store would crawl under uh, their from out, out from under their little rock and be like, ah, 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 no fucking way. Right. And exactly. It would not happen. Yep. To 22. That's exactly what would happen. We'd have we have Armageddon if it went to 20, if they went to 22. Because so, you get some guy, well, you know, if, the, uh, if we go to 22, we'll. We'll save this many lives from auto accidents, which I'm, I'm not making light of that, by the way. But it, it just takes one person to start doing it. Oh, that's a great idea. Let me let me as a politician be the guy to make that happen, you know, because you want to. And, and, and Glenn said it best on the show, too. Yeah, he said bad ideas spread like wildfire. Yep, he's right. He's right. All it takes is one like municipality yeah. to be like, well, wait a minute. What if we're not us? And then yeah. every other Joe Schmo is like, oh, did you hear what so and so is thinking about? We should think about that too. And then all of a sudden, everyone's thinking about it. And you're like, oh, you're the asshole who started this. Yep. You're 100% right. And that's the problem. You have people who are uneducated about the industry, who don't know anything about it, and just right. automatically like put their black cloud 
um, over yeah. with the blanket statement of like, well, it's all bad. Uh, let's just get, you know, let's do this. You know, and then people, and then more people like that person start thinking about, well, let's do this. It's like, well, what do you know about our industry? Well, it's bad. Why is it bad? Well, yeah. it, 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 you know, it kills people. How? You know, and, and, and it's like, wow, you get lung cancer. How? Yeah. You think Philip Morris, you know, Philip Morris and, and, and big tobacco with, with the cigarettes, you know, that, that's, that's a different industry than our industry. It's not even the same kind of tobacco. That's the thing that, that's different. the kicker too. People don't even realize the tobacco that's in cigarettes is nothing like the tobacco that we and have different, in And completely different usage patterns. Oh yeah. There's not a lot even, of, it, it, it's tobacco, but it's yeah. not even the same yeah. stuff. Not yeah. even close. Yeah. Not even close. You know, Matt, one of the most interesting things that happened to me was um, three years ago, I had I, people know I was pretty sick. I had a blood infection. I didn't smoke for a long time. Right. And um, I had a conversation with my dad, right? Who's a cigarette smoker and, and a very occasional cigar smoker. And he's like, how are you making out? Like not smoking cigars. I said, I'm doing fine. He goes, he goes are you using the patch? Are you using, you know, I said, dad, I, I, I know I'm sick. I can't smoke it. Right. I, I miss it from a sentimental standpoint but not from a physiological standpoint. It's not you know? a craving. It's not a craving. And I said, when, when I will have the right moment, I will, I, I'll, my body will tell me at that point. But, uh, but yeah, so it, it, it's, it's a, I'm not the guy who's running out in the rain to have a cigarette. You know, yeah. and that cigar smokers aren't the guys. In the, cigar smokers aren't doing that is what you notice. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you, you know, if you don't, if you don't have a place to, to smoke cigars when you're in inclement weather, um, you just yeah. don't smoke and yeah. you know exactly. and, and it's like ah it sucks because like i really want one because you really want to enjoy one but it's not like oh my god if i don't have a cigar like i'm gonna i'm gonna die like the yeah. cigarette people it's yeah. like, oh, if i don't have a butt in like 20 minutes like i, I, I won't be able to function it's yeah. like it, it then and and that's real and there are people like that and that and that is why cigarette smoking is what it is right. It, right. It, it is that addictive and it's like if you don't have it, it it's like almost it's the same with people with coffee like it, like heavy coffee drinkers who need the caffeine it's like if i don't have a cup of coffee i won't be able to function and not that that's, I'm not making like putting them in the same basket in terms of they're both bad, but it's the same, it's the same, you know, mentality of the way your body craves certain things. Now, the nicotine that's in cigar tobacco is vastly different yeah. than what is in cigarettes. That's a, yeah. Um, yep. First of all, you don't inhale cigar smoke. Um, it's only ingested through your mouth, which doesn't, your body does not absorb at all the same way you would inhale Mm -hmm. You would absorb it when you inhale it into your lungs. That's number one. Number two, um, cigar tobacco is way higher quality than the tobacco in cigarettes. Also, part of that argument being the tobacco that's in cigarettes is treated with over 30 different kinds of chemicals. And it's not even necessarily the nicotine that gets you addicted to cigarettes. This is, this is the part that people don't understand. And this is the part that people need to learn in their head. It's not even really the nicotine that gets you addicted to it. And I know people will disagree, but it's true. It's not necessarily the nicotine. It's the chemicals that they put in it that when they get into your bloodstream, it gives you that stimulating effect. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is what makes it hard to get away from it. And there's a reason those chemicals are there for that reason. So that you need those cigarettes. You keep buying them. Big Tobacco keeps selling their product. Okay. That is the best way to explain why they are very different. Um, it's also for those reasons that the lung cancer is so much higher risk for cigarette smokers. In addition to the tar and the ash that you do breathe into your lungs, you're also breathing in chemicals into your lungs. There are no chemicals in premium handmade cigars. There is not. So whatever smoke goes into your mouth, it's the tobacco smoke. There's some nicotine, which nicotine's in vegetables too. There's more nicotine in one eggplant than there is in a box of cigars. Um, that's a fact. Um, there, you know, it, and you're not, and you're also not even breathing in your lungs. So your body's not even absorbing that much of it anyway. Uh, nicotine isn't necessarily what causes the cancer. It's everything else. Um, and when you breathe all of it into your lungs, that's what gives you the lung cancer. Um, and I think that that is the conversation that does not get said and explained to people enough. Yeah, yeah I agree. That's exactly the, that's, that's the clearest, simplest, easiest way to explain it. Yeah. And that's the truth. And it is. Yeah. Yep. Uh, anyone who tells you 
that, uh, you know, otherwise is misinformed. I agree. I totally agree with you on that. That is what makes it different. Um, and the, and the tobacco that they get for cigarettes is, uh, it's a much lower quality. It's all ground down, chopped up, it's treated. Um, it, it's not even, it's not anything like what we talk about with cigar tobacco. It's not, you know, the romance of going down to a field and looking at the leaf. No, they, no, it's no, there's no romance like that. Yeah. They grow it. They, they just, they, they chop it all down. They grind it all down. They treat it, whatever the fuck they do with it. And then they just start processing cigarettes. And that's the way that the cigarette industry works. It's in no way, shape or form like the cigar industry. Um, and so, and again, so that's why when people want to couple all tobacco products and they want to bring premium handmade cigars into it, it's not the same thing. It's not, um, you know, just like people in the alcohol industry, they might argue that not that it's really the same thing, but just for, for the sake, like you have the alcohol industry, you have the tobacco industry, right? Well, in the alcohol industry, you have wine, you have liquor, you have beer. You have, you know, those, those are like the main groups, right? Wine is not going to, within the moderation that you consume it, wine is not going to affect you the same way that liquor will health-wise, you know? Um, there's people out there who say like a glass of red wine is good for your heart. I don't know. The, I don't know the stats on that because that's not my thing. But like, those are things that I hear, right? Obviously, you know, uh, four glasses of Maker's Mark every night is not going to be good for you. You know, so it, it's, it's kind of like a similar, I'm not going to say it's the same, but it's a similar concept of like, well, it's a blanket of an industry, but there's specific products that are going to affect your body differently. You know, you drink, you drink tons of whiskey every day. You're going to have liver problems. You know, you drink a glass of wine with dinner. You're probably going to be okay. Um, it's, it's different. Um, not the same, similar, but um, I don't know. I digress on that situation. But no, good, good point. I just think it needs to be explained better, you know, and, and it just, it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't yep. get explained. Yep. Better. Yep. So, um, anyway, that's that. Um, what else did you have on your list for, well, me, uh, for notes we, this week? Can we talk one other thing? I, mm, the flavored yes. tobacco thing. Oh, I forgot about that. Yes. Yeah. The flavored yeah. Tobacco. yeah go yeah. ahead. Um, what were your thoughts on what they said about that? Sorry, I was relighting my cigar. That's okay. Um, it was interesting. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was interesting. Um, I, to me, you know, flavored tobacco, like, again, like I said before, flavored it's, tobacco is not, it's not my thing, but I respect it. And I yeah. believe we should protect it just as equal as anything else. And that includes not that's not just flavored right. cigars or infused cigars. That also includes the umbrella of pipe tobacco, which does not get mentioned enough. Pipe tobacco True. is just as important in this in this conversation. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to dispute that either. I, you know, again, my my feeling on this whole thing is this. I mean, I know it's something on CRA's agenda for next year, so I don't want to say it's getting ignored. But again, this needed to be Armageddon this year. It needed. Uh, it needed more light. It needed. It look, and and the, and again, I'm going to push back on the retailer and and some of the manufacturers. Not all the manufacturers. This needed to really. It really needed to be loud and clear held on us because I hear. I I understand why they're trying to fight the characterizing flavors thing, but, and that's. I'm not saying don't fight that, but again, I think we're going to get steamrolled here again. I it's. It, and I see the same thing could happen at some point with an end of year bill where a flavored ban gets put in or something like that. So I just, I think they just, this needed to be, I, I've used the term, this needs to be Scarface guns blazing. This That's how important this flavored thing yep. is. And, and we've talked about this on the show as well, because if you don't have a part of the business that's selling flavored cigars, it is going to disrupt the, the economic ecosystem of this, of this industry. It's, it's, it's a fact mm -hmm. you, you can't you you can't say well we'll give this up and our industry can't recover it's going to be tough to recover for a lot of people with that oh absolutely yeah yeah a lot of things are going to change yeah you know uh yeah. and that's not good for anybody regardless yep, yep. even a manufacturer who doesn't do anything related to that it's going to yep. affect them in yep. some way shape or form 
Yep. Uh, oh, great. And, it, and it's not going to be a for a positive. Uh, agree. You know? Yeah. May, maybe, maybe, you know, if, if certain products like that went away and like you'd have maybe people just churning, you know, one could argue, well, uh, those people start buying like non, non flavored stuff and, and other products. Yeah. Eh. Eh, maybe kind of sort of maybe a little bit but yeah. no the the, the bigger pick it, it, that's not the the bigger picture it's really not the stance you want to yeah. have you want to be yeah. like no this is gonna yeah. work with me 100 percent, yeah. regardless yeah and, and you know here's the thing you know i know i'm, I'm critiquing critiquing maybe josh and glenn a bit but they they have accomplished a lot in the last year um one of the we the, the victory on on the tax thing um is a big victory for us. These are the types of things we used to get. Oh yeah. Robert. These are the types of things that we, when we like for years was loss after loss. Guess what? This was the biggest challenge the industry faced this year was that tax hike, the Durban tax hike. And guess what? It was beaten. Mm -hmm. So give these guys some credit for that. You know, give them credit. I'm sure they had a, a role. I know they have a role in this. So there's, there's some positives of it. I'll say too. And and Absolutely. I was glad they mentioned that. That's important for the, look. They should be talking about their accomplishments on, on on a show like yours. So that was good. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, and, and you know what? We only have so much time at the Smoke and Tobacco Show because we're not cigar coop. You uh, will. <laughs> I, I heard the comment by the way the week before. <laughs> it's all out of love, coop. You know, it's all out of love. I, it's, it's all kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's all love. Don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all love. <laughs> Who said it? It was like it came up. Who are you interviewing? And. Uh, <laughs> and I wrote, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know what? I know most of the time, yeah. you you and your wife, uh, I know you guys are usually having dinner around that time. Right, so I have it on on the, you have on it the on phone, yeah. Before you do your show and <laughs> yeah. you're listening, and I, I know you're listening, and I specifically right. say it because I know you're going to sit there with her and you're going to be like, oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just fun. Right. Um, but right. no, um, I only had so much time, so there was only so much I, I could sure, do. Exactly. But believe me, if if I was going three or four hours and, and that's the other thing too, as much as I joke, you know, Coop, and I'll say this to, to people listening, you know, Coop does have much longer shows and it's not because that, you know, his show is any better or anything like that. He, he has a different form. He has a different, uh, just the thing. I, 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 I like to keep my show to a certain time frame. Yep. Um, and, and that's, that's just the way I like to do my show. Uh, if I really wanted to, and go as long as Coop. Sure, there's so many things we could get into. Uh, I just I try to keep it to a certain time frame. Um, so in that window that we have, even with you, as long as your shows are, if your shows was seven hours every week, you could I know you could fill that gap. And not just because like I'm saying like well Coop could just make like yeah. there's a lot of information that can be said. Yep. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that could come up, be discussed. So, um. Yeah, there, there's so many more things I could have gone into. We didn't even really get that much into that stuff, which in hindsight, I really yeah. wish we did. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, again, we, we only have so much time. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think that's important, too. That and the substantial equivalence um, that was supposed to happen at the end of 2020. That was um, an enormous victory. For that us. was another enormous victory. And, and I feel like it's not really been forgotten about, but we haven't really brought it up in a while. Uh, and even then, I did, we didn't really bring it up. But that, that was a huge win. I don't think even the consumers even understand how big of a win that is. That was probably the biggest win we had as an industry ever. Um, but what was significant about it? Yes. And that came on the court end, but what was significant about what happened with the Durban tax thing that happened in the legislature where we've not, we've had the least success. It seems like, right. Um, yeah. We've stopped some bills from happening, but you know what? When tobacco 21 came in, when uh s chip right s chip was mitigated I, it wasn't but it wasn't eliminated mm -hmm. um of course the whole deeming regulations we haven't had those it, this was an important legislative win we had this year absolutely yeah. um another thing that uh we did bring up on the show was there was something that happened in and, and me and you have talked about this um there was something that came up in my local news. So the city of Boston um, has a new mayor. Um, I believe mm -hmm. her name is Michelle Wu. Mm -hmm. um, she has already, since, you know, being sworn in as the mayor, 
she's already hit the ground running with a lot of things that she wants to do. Uh, I'm not going to get into all those. This, this is not the place for it. Um, right. it's, it's very irrelevant. But one thing that she was uh, pushing for was um, there's, there's uh, a bill that she's, she's proposed. I, I don't know this, all the real nitty gritty specifics on it, but there's a thing that she proposed about um like energy and like fossil fuels and, and and clean energy and stuff like that that she wants to do for the city which um is its own thing but when you read in the article that i read it was uh and, and again and this is this is where the the conversation we can really get into it it said that you know the city you know the part of this bill would be that the city would uh, reduce its investments in um certain things related to that but also there was one thing in the middle of all of those things on the list that stuck out to me tobacco products that's it just tobacco products okay and it's very it's like okay like we got to address tobacco products yeah it's like we just putting it on the agenda it's, it's just like- it's a again this is another thing where you have one story and the things that are involved with that story. Okay. And then you just kind of slide in tobacco products. Why is that in there? Why is oh, that? I know in there? because no one will notice it and we'll just slide it in there and oh, we'll get our cr- thing approved. No, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, hmm. we're, we're evil. We're going to dress evil, right? Mm-hmm. We're bad. You no, know, we're the bad guys you now. Yeah. So <laughs> her, that's like, oh, well, it, well, okay. Maybe you want to like stop, you know, investing in, in any kind of business or industry or in any area where it might, benefit tobacco product and i understand that maybe you're trying to reduce people buying cigarettes and stuff at the, at the convenience store i get that and i don't you know i'm not a cigarette smoker i never have never will i'm not on their team you know um so great take away cigarettes i, I don't give a shit um but at the same time don't lump premium handmade cigars into your your narrative because it's not the same thing so when you take a blanket statement like tobacco products that just means that to me, that's well. Anything that has tobacco leaves in it, I just I, no. That's an enemy to me, and it needs to be snuck into this bill. And it's like, okay, well, see, that's how trouble starts. And Massachusetts is already a state that um, uh, is very, very unfriendly to premium cigars with tobacco in general. But because of that, premium cigars have taken uh, massive impact because of it. Because of Good. the guilty by association so to speak uh, there's very 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 few cigar shops here very very few lounges um there's a 45 percent tobacco tax i think it is in massachusetts on top of a 6.25 percent sales tax so i mean you're buying cigars i mean you put those two numbers in there on top of whatever you're paying for it you know it gets expensive quick um you know, and this is why. I mean, and 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 a lot of stuff like that happens because of examples like this. Little little pieces at a time get snuck into these bigger bills, and then they get through, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh well, you can't do this now, or oh the price of this, you're tired. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh well, when did that happen? Well, it went through with this bill. Well, let's look at the bill. Oh, um, clean energy, clean energy, blah 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 blah. Oh, tobacco products. Oh, uh, tax increase. Or oh, um, you know, it's like, oh well. Of course, no one knew about it because why would they? Who's going to read that and be like, oh, yeah, well, I'm just going to go buy it. It's, and that's why it gets snuck into other things. And this is yep. the yeah. problem that we have. Right. Um, so, again, that's just another example. I want to bring it up because it's another example of something specific. Um, do I yeah. think it's going to have like a huge impact? I, I don't know all the specifics on it. But just for the sake of the argument, it's just another example of, oh, this is how it happens. It gets snuck in. Right. Yeah, you know, and as as you know, I know a lot of times we see these press releases come out about well, so and so wrote a letter to this congressman from this. Yeah, all yep. the, I've stopped reporting on those just so you know, mm-hmm. um, because it, it's first of all it takes time. I mean, I'll mention it maybe in a weekly roundup or something like that, but not. I'm not going to devote a whole article to that unless there's a tangible result. But uh, okay, if you're going to take time to put press releases out on that then at least take the time like going back to flavored tobacco and tobacco 21, put out some alerts on, on things like that. It takes the same amount of time. Mm-hmm. That, that's my point. Right. So, you know, writing a letter, it's like, it's nice. It looks like you've done something really hasn't accomplished crap. Right. 
No. Um, because what I've never heard, what has happened after these letters are sent, right? Like, exactly. Like, what happens about this stuff? What's the follow up? Like, well, yeah, was there a meeting? You know, was there, it, it's, and, and it's like, uh, you know, so, and it's not that I'm trying to be mean and not cover it. It's, I got, I got, I got to still run a business and, uh, there's only so much I can write. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, so, I, I agree. Um, yeah. you know, and that's, and, and that's very true. Um, yeah. You know, I, I agree with you. I mean, it, it's hard to report on every, every little letter or every little thing that gets said. Yep. yep. It's not that it's not important. It's just, yeah. It, every, everything beneficial or any attempt to be beneficial to the industry is always a good thing. Do we always report on every little thing? No. Um, sometimes it's just, it doesn't really need to be reported on um, because it's, you know, it's, it's a small amount of detail um, that doesn't really need the attention of everyone because it's stuff that's kind of working in the background. It's when it's a bigger issue, like something that's, you know, something that's actually going to be put into law or a potential to be put into law or like a change or a win or a loss, like the big stuff that people need to know that's actually officially going to change something. It definitely needs to be reported on, but if someone sends a letter, um, like that's great. But like, unless something comes of that, like you said, like it, it, it you can't just report on something without being like, all right, well, so if someone, if someone goes to like one of our websites and they read that article, right. And then like, oh, so-and-so sent a letter to, you know, blah, blah. all right, what happened? We don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. or, oh, yeah. yeah well, exactly. is it, how is this going to change? We don't know we don't, what the letter was sent. Well, what did the letter say? Well, I mean, it said this and this. Well what, well, what was the response? We don't know. All right. Well, then what do you. All right. So basically, I just read that someone sent a letter. Yeah. And then like there's nothing else. Mm -hmm. That's like me putting out a statement saying I sent a letter to William Cooper in Indian Trail, North Carolina to tell him that I think his show is too long. Mm -hmm. What did Coop say? He didn't say anything. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. You okay. Nailed it. You nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> yeah, All right. Or, Did Coop address it? Yeah. Nope. Or, or someone sent me an email. <laughs> someone sent me an email saying I deleted. I deleted some content on the show. Yeah. Uh, like, it's the same. Thing. It, it, okay, Matt. It, it, give me back that real quick. Why I didn't address that is because it's standard operating procedure for us, right? So, I mean, if yeah. I'm asked about it, like, if I'm asked about it, I, yeah, I mentioned it, right? But it's not like I had to feel like I had to make this statement because it's standard operating. This is standard operating procedure, I would think, for the people who we're, we're voting into office to support things for us, I guess. So, um, does it at least give an impression? Here's the one thing. It does give an impression that people are supporting us, right? But, but again, that's what they, we, we, maybe we should be noting those accomplishments ongoing for the people in congress with that and I, I do think glenn does a good job with that um and glenn has done a good job with that you know with cra pointing out the people who've helped us so i'll give him that there's um you know while we're on the topic there's something interesting that i kind of i haven't really been able to bring up a lot with uh pca um but it, it's on my list i think it's on your list too actually i think this was one of your ideas mm -hmm. i know we talked about it yeah. But um, something I'll say publicly, not that it really affects a lot of the listeners. Uh, it's more of an internal thing. But this is, again, this is more of a appealing the, the curtain open like you like to do. Um, in terms of the PCA, or even, even, even all of them, just all of them, uh, CRA, PCA, uh, doing a little bit more, cause, and, I, and, and, and the argument is that it benefits everybody. Um, helping everyone else helps everyone as a whole uh having those organizations kind of help push a little bit more of the media um through their through their platforms and their network because right. at the, because at the same so here's the thing pca does all their stuff they do send out their own like um announcements and stuff but not everyone not everyone gets a hold of that information when they send it out themselves so they really do rely on the media, media yep. to help get out what's yeah. going on at right. those organizations, right? So the stuff that they're working on, the stuff that even the consumers need to be aware of so that they can speak up or they, if, if it's something that really bothers them, they go, hey, wait, I don't like this. I want to be involved. Well, they got to know about it. They got to learn. They have to hear what's going on. They have to get the information. They have to know if it's existence. And we as media, you know, we do a good job of making sure that we are the megaphone for those industry, for those uh, organizations, 
Right. Um, and it, and and it's not a knock. I just think it would be nicer if they helped promote um, us as a way, you know, to get more people to to hear this the information of theirs that we want to get out. Um, it'd be good, you know, for, it, it's good for everyone, you know, because they, I think that one could say that they could use more help getting their information out there. Um, and what's the, what other than doing it themselves, just internally with their own platforms or whatever, what's the next best thing? Well, all the media outlets reporting on it and all the followings that they have. Yeah, I, I'll say this. They've gotten a lot better though compared to five years ago mm -hmm. um one thing that pca put in when they put the new website in a couple of years ago is they put in a way to build in a custom newsletter and you can subscribe to uh various media outlets and and you know they'll send you a weekly thing um certainly i would say make sure smoking tobacco is on that if you're not they, they've been really good about getting getting us on there so i think they have done some things to help with that uh the communications are a lot better from both PCA and CRA than they were before, um, which I give them credit also because they're a lot shorter staffed than they were. They're not perfect by any means um, right. either, but but I'm going back like, if you go back to 2014, it was like, we, we, we like, there were exclusives going to media outlets mm -hmm. on policy issues. And I'm like, you know, on policy stance, policy issues, mechanics. Like I have zero, so I have zero tolerance for that. Media exclusives are a part of the industry, but when it comes to the survival of the industry in terms of policies and what's going on uh, within the, those organizations, I'm a paying member, just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. There's, there should not be exclusives on that. That's also gotten a lot better. And I've talked to Scott about that one in particular, and I think that's gotten a lot better. So it's getting there. Um, I wish they would just, you know, again, I think a lot of stuff should be promoted, like our shows. Like, I don't know how much PCA or CRA promoted that show on Thursday night. Um, I didn't look, but did they? Um, I don't remember what yeah. they did. Yeah. But it wasn't, it wasn't as, it wasn't as good as some of the manufacturers have done for themselves. Yeah, look, yeah, exactly. And that's what, that's what, that should be a no brainer. They should be promoting that. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is a, because why it's important. That, again, it goes back to what I was talking about with Brian. You want to, these are the, these, you have the main guys on there right now. And this is a chance for who they serve to hear what, hear their point, hear their start of the story. They, they should be promoting that as much as, you know, obviously it's, it's your job to promote it, it's your brand, but, but they should be promoting that as well. Yeah. Um, and uh it's their I, message all it, as much as it's my it's, show it's, it's also their, their mes message it, it's their message yeah and it's it, it's important because that stuff's out there for forever it's not going to be a one-time thing so um that's you know and i've been very, the other thing i've been where they really need to work on is there's thousands of articles and videos that go up every year from the trade show and they need to do a better job at sharing that i'm going to give them a little pass on that this year because they were extremely short staffed so um but I, that's something they need to work on in the future yeah absolutely i agree yeah um, yeah i think it would be beneficial for everybody yeah um yeah but you know re regardless you know then and that's but you're right you're 100 right on your point yeah yeah and, and that's and that's a small issue and, and hopefully that you know we all can work on that yeah um together you know as, as time goes forward i think that there's a lot of changes yeah. at the pca that ha that have been good uh, i think they're going and, and we, we talked about in our in our post trade show conversation i think there's a lot of potential there and i think they're starting to go in the right direction or I think a, so too. a stronger better I direction so. um but you know there's still work to be done and yeah. uh, we just have yeah. to, to keep on that and um yep. yep and hope that those changes get made or help get those changes to be made um you know we, we did touch on you know as you know the beginning of the show it kicked it off with a little bit of reflection on the trade show this year Yep. Um, which a lot of us have taken as with the circumstances, many circumstances, both internally and externally with the industry and then just with the world in general, the pandemic and all that. This was a very interesting year for the trade show. Um, very different. I, but again, I think the, 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 the narrative will be we chalk it up to a, a mulligan year. Not that it was a bad show. It was not a bad show. 
It, no, it wasn't a bad show. It but was a mulligan year, though, because of a lot of things that impacted the way it went down. Yeah, I didn't agree with everything that Glenn and Josh said, by the way, with that. Um, what, what, what did you not agree with? Th- yes, there was enthusiasm, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, I agree with that part. Um, you they were talking about like they're talking about the people there who were buying. I get that. You still have a good chunk of your constituents staying home from this thing, and you have to address this thing. You have to address it. I mean, there's no way you can't just say, "Well, it's looking good, business as usual." I'm hoping what Scott rolls out, he said in January, is going to be. Something that's going to be substantial here because you can't go in as business as usual. They, they, they're they not going to get that mulligan next year. Here's the they're thing. Going to, they're going to get destroyed next year if, if they have another trade show like like the past one. Well, here's the other thing, too. <clears throat> I know that uh, Cigar Coop is officially not attending uh, Tobacco Plus Expo 2022. Yes, um, that smoking, is true. Smoke and Tobacco will be there. Yeah. Uh, we will be there in January in Las Vegas. Um, what's interesting is, you know, we've already begun to prepare for the show, uh, you know, as, you know, as we all do. Right. The trade show. Uh, we're already heavily preparing to go out there for that show. And part of that is finding out who's going to be there, where they're going to be, setting right. up appointments and all this. We look at the attendees list for TPE. Big four are going. Um, yes, but. <laughs> okay. Do you know where I'm going with this? I, I think I, there's I, only I, I two of those companies that are gonna have a significant presence there, though. Okay. So, but yeah. However, but they're still but, gonna be there, and I think that's important for you guys to have the to have those connections there, right? Because you're you're newer. I think, and I talked to you about that as well. I think it is important you're there. Absolutely. However, the the bigger part of that is not going to the PCA show, which, in our opinion, I think you would agree on this. I think is more important than TPE. Yeah, that is a major issue. Now, I'm not saying that it falls on like Scott and Glenn and all those guys to, right. to fix it like all on their own. I think those companies, you know, they also need to just kind of, I don't know, they need to work together on it. It's definitely, it's not a one way street, but you know, they're, they're definitely, that's going to, that's, that's going to impact the show. If those four companies are not there, it's going to impact the show one way or the other, no matter I how believe, you look at it. It's going to impact I believe, the show. I believe one's coming back, but I don't I don't have any hard facts. This is gut. Just some things I'm hearing. Okay. Right? One, one of them will be back. But that's, I think it's speculation. That's not appropriate for me to, to say who it is. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. And that's respectable. Right, right. Um, um, what you'll see, though, at, at TPE is Davidoff and General don't quite do the same job as Altidus and George State do that. Um, and, and a lot of it has to do with the products they're, they're marketing um, more so than anything, because you're not going to, you're not going to spend time with Davidoff white label at TPE. Um, same thing with Altidus, you know, you got, you got the high end Monte Cristo stuff, but they're having a presence there. It's still good that they have the presence there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they have a presence there, which is good for them. It's good for the industry. It's good for all of us. They're there. Actually, yeah, I'm this- confused why general doesn't invest more in this trade. I'm going to be honest with you. General is the one, Maybe they will this year, but they haven't done a lot in the past at that show. I mean, General's in, is a big company. Um, That's what I'm saying. They got yeah. a lot of brands. They got a lot of lines. They got a lot of different stuff that they do. They're very diversified with their cigars that they have. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I can't speak on that because um, I haven't been there for years past. Yep. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I guess it's a good point. They're a bigger company. Um, yeah, that's the one I would say they could be- I think they could really benefit from being there in a bigger way. They're there. But I mean, when I was at two years ago, they had a small table. I mean, this is general we're talking about here. Oh yeah, yeah, um, um, yeah. So I I think that having that presence at PCA would be important, not only just for the, the money that they'll spend at the trade yeah. show, which is at the end of the game. Remember, the trade show is all about the revenue for the right. organization for everything else that they do. So you have those four big companies, which make up for the, probably the you know in years past the majority of you know booth sale money and all that stuff that they that they spend to be there i mean drew estate for those who know or have ever been to a trade show it was ipcpr ITTA. um they got they got big booths and that, that's not cheap so that's money that they they pay into pc yeah yeah that's the biggest part of it too 
It's the money that PCA gets to make from the trade show to fund their organization. So you take away those four people. That's a lot of money that they lost. That, that is. And uh, it, it showed at the last trade show. Mm-hmm. There's no question about it. It was the um, smallest trade show that they've ever had. In a long time. Yeah. And, and um, you know, it, it had a ripple effect. It, it affected the budget on things such as the opening gala. They had to find other sponsors. I um, think, though, with the exception of those four people, right? There was a lot of other companies that didn't go, but there was two big things that happened that also affected that, which that's why I think where 2022 will be interesting to see how it unfolds. You had the pandemic and everything related to that, which is, which is a whole one thing that you really, you can't knock anyone for. You can't knock anyone for that. Exactly. Which we've talked about that and relevance and all that. Yeah. Two, the fact that last year TPE took place eight weeks before PCA in Las Vegas. And so they had who, to stay, yeah. So hold on. I'll let you finish that thought, which the reason though, it being, you know, for manufacturers, they're going to go out there. They're going to sell product, especially smaller manufacturers that don't have as much to sell. And then eight weeks later, you're going to go all the way back and do it again when you were just out there and you just, and, and, and the retail is to go out there to buy. So people are going to go out there to sell and buy. And then eight weeks later, you can come back and do it again. You probably don't even have, you probably haven't even accepted delivery on the stuff you bought eight weeks ago. Yep. So it's like, what are you going there for? Right. I get that too. I do. Um, that was a problem. And that was more of TPE. And I understand why they pushed it out. But being so close to PCA, uh, that, that definitely impacted them too. This year, it does go back to January. At least for now. Um, hopefully that doesn't change. But um, I think that'll help PCA. I think that more people are going to start to travel again in 2022 than they did this year. Um, looking at the map, for the 2022 show. Uh, I noticed that Cigar Aficionado has a booth at the 2022 show. Yeah, they 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 look they took a lot of criticism for not being there. It was it was COVID protocol. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm com- not that I know these guys well enough, but I'm confident it was pro- COVID protocol why they weren't there. It wasn't yeah. anything else. And I respect them on that. Mm. So even just something like that to see that as of right now they're they're committing to coming back. It's great to see. Um People like that. And again, we did talk about that more of a COVID protocol, probably. So to see people being like, all right, well, we're going to come back out now. Um, that's good to see. When it comes to like the big four, that's a separate issue. And then like the middle ground issue is like the, the smaller or medium sized manufacturers that didn't go. And those reasons were for like, you know, like perfect example, United Cigar, right? Oh, you, uh, Oliver from United will be on the show this week um, Ooh, that's for a Christmas Oliver. special. Yeah, it's like Oliver. Cool. Yeah. So but here's the thing. So Oliver, you know, United, they went out there for TPE this year in May. They sold everything. All the Atabay and Byron and the Vandalaire and all the stuff that they have. They sold it all, which is great. They sold all their product. That's awesome. It's doing business. They sold it. What's the problem there? Well, eight weeks later, why are you going to go to PCA? You already sold everything. There's nothing to sell. Um, and I get it for someone of their size. It, it, it does come down to a cost thing. Why are we going to pay to fly people out there? Like Oliver pay for the booth space to be like, I got on to sell. Hey, you want to try this out of Oh, that's awesome. You get into the whole thing. All right. Well, I, can I, I want to buy an out for my store. I don't, I, we're, we're already sold out for the year. Oh, yeah. we can get you in for next year. Your chances of that customer coming back are small. Uh, it's basic. It's basic sales. You know, when you, you let a customer walk away without purchasing anything, even if they tell you they're coming back. Seventy uh, percent of the time, they never come back. So, um, you know that's that's an issue. And so I get that the logistics. I get that. Hopefully, things returning to their original state. Hopefully, it'll be a bigger bounce back for PCA this year. For the last couple of years, that you know shit has gone down. But time will tell. So. Um, I think that's the biggest part of it that I'm looking forward to seeing is just exactly how many more people come back and how much bigger the show is this year or, you know, next year, 2022. Cause I think that's going to be a, the biggest gauge of where they went. Uh, PCA. Yeah, the one thing I may disagree a little, I don't think TP put much of a dent into the PCA last year, even being that close. Um, 
Now, one thing I was told from a lot of companies that will go into both shows is they said, hey, we're holding off on the product announcements for PCA because, you know, hey, we, 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 since we're supporting PCA, it's important for them to be, uh, to survive, you know? Yeah. And we want to kind of support them. So, you know what? We'll take some orders at TPE, but the new stuff's going to happen at PCA. And uh, I think that, so that, I think TP's tried to go head to head with the, with, product announcements and they've it hasn't worked i think this industry is very much a creature of habit and unless they're pulling out of the show like drew estate and all to this etc they're they're going to do their business as they normally do uh, mm-hmm. with that um so it didn't happen um and and that's a little that went into the decision of, of me not going we, we do have some, per, and I've shared, there's some conflicts on the team uh, outside of the team. Uh, we have two guys moving. Um, we have, we all have limited uh, vacation time because we have day jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, and we thought about sending a subset of the team. It just wasn't going to work. So uh, it wasn't like we pulled out because we don't think TP, like TPE, they, they're wonderful to us. They're mm-hmm. going to be wonderful to you guys. Yep. Um, and it, it, like I said, for a newer brand, I think it's important. Like I said, I think you guys should absolutely be there. I'm glad you guys are going. Um, we'll be tapping into you guys for your coverage as well. Um, and I'm excited about it. So, yeah, we're very excited about it. Um, it. It'll be great. And it's always just, you know, for the industry people, it's always great for everyone. It's more relaxed. Show. You're going to have a more relaxed show too. Not to say not, there's nothing to cover, but you'll have a more relaxed show um, in terms of you'll see it's a different, it's a very different vibe there. Yeah, it's always great. You know, anytime we go to any event, whether it's a trade show or a festival yep. or whatever it is, uh, it's always great for the industry to get together just for everyone to, to catch up. Yep. A little reunion. So that's always nice. Yeah. That's always that's that, that's the part I look forward to the most is the, the social aspect of everyone getting together. Um, yep. I think that, I, that that's huge. That's the part I'll miss. That's the part we're all going to miss. Uh, that's the part that you can't make up. Right. It's just, there's no way. It's unfortunate. I mean, you and I will see each other in February. So uh, we'll be down yeah. at Abe's event. So. Yeah. yeah, well, and and the and the coop is the whole coop team going to the Great Smoke? Mm, I think it's just going to be me and Bear right now, um, but that's still be determined. So um, it won't. I don't think Aaron's going. Aaron's going to TPE actually, uh, but Aaron's going with his developing pallets thing. So he's not representing coop there, um, and he's got guys on his team that haven't been anywhere in two years. So yeah. I think it was they, it was very important that those guys go. And also that we have uh, our friends that how about that cigar, Matt and Garrett. I know they'll be at. Both oh, they are going. Yeah, they were. They helped us out a little last year. Uh, they did a nice job as well. Great. By the way, great guys. Great guys. Oh yeah, I love those guys. Uh, really. Uh, and I've, they're, they've done a fantastic job in the media. Yeah, absolutely. They've done a great job. I'm always excited to see. Good for, they guys. had a congressman on. Good for they had that congressman on uh, from Pennsylvania a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Big, big shout out to those guys. Yeah. Good yeah. job. Yeah, they're doing a great job. Uh, Absolutely. If, you yeah, if you haven't heard of How About That Cigar, you should check them out. Gary and Matt. Yep, great guys. Great guys. Really yep. awesome guys. Yep. We, we got to hang out with them yep. uh, in Vegas during PCA. Uh, it was a great time. Um, you know, we uh, we all enjoyed adult beverages and cigars together. Yep. And, you know, shit was fun. You know, what can I yep. say? Uh, that's the best part, though. Just just be everyone being together. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The Kaz bar is the place everyone hangs out in, in uh, TPE. It's at the uh, Sahara. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. And so that'll be good. So, yep. Yep. And, and like you said, there'll, there'll be a lot of content that, that does come out of that. So, you know, obviously yep. um, keep an eye on that. Our, all of our trade show coverage for uh, uh, 2022 will be brought to you by Drew Estate. There you go. Uh, as well as uh, the spare notes show. Well, also, now I'll be brought to you. Well, the, uh, my studio sponsorship will be um, uh, brought to you by Drew Estate. So yep. uh, Drew Estate is going to be uh, involved with us going forward, too. It's going to be awesome. We're really excited to have yep. them with us. Yep. So uh, just, just shout out to them. This is, uh, this is, this is, their, this is their forum now, so uh, the Spare Note Show. So uh, shout out to them. Excited to be working with those guys. They're great. Um, but, yeah, so all that, all that coverage will be, will be available to you. Again, as fast as we can get it up. I know Nicole's already like preparing to do her rapid uploads. She's, she's, she's good at that. She gets that shit up real fast. I mean, I, 
record stuff on the trade show floor and within a half an hour it's online so she's she's, she's yeah good. It, so nicole by the way if you're you know if you're ever a free agent by the way you know for for show stuff i'm just saying uh that you know just call coop here <laughs> i'm just kidding man because <laughs> hey, i don't have i don't I, my wife does a great job but i need a nicole as well because <laughs> everybody needs yeah, a nicole you know exactly I mean, yeah does yeah a great job exactly yeah <laughs> exactly yeah she was listening to the show but i don't know if she's one listening of, now. one and look i've said this to you and i'll say one of the rising female stars in cigar media um so and i mean that very well she's done a great job yeah yep uh i i i think so too yeah um, yep. she um you know she she keeps her head up and she uh she stays away from some of the uh nonsense yep that's that comes super, with being a yep. female in the industry which is it's tough and it, that's very hard we've uh you know it was funny matt and not to digress too much but aaron and i were talking about like old websites from the past right mm -hmm. and there was a, a female blogger I don't know what her name was, but she had a site. She still has the site still up, but it just hasn't been updated in like 10 years. It's called Her Humidor. And okay. it was cigar reviews written from the female perspective, uh, not worrying about what the female being the female, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, not worry about what the female's wearing, but, but, but more about, hey, this is the female smoking the cigars. And it's really good content, actually. I wish that site was kept, kept going, but it never got taken down, but it hasn't been updated in like 10 years. Oh, interesting. I didn't even know about that. That's really it was awesome. yeah, when I was first starting out, I used to read that site all the time. So yeah, it's uh it's called Her Humidor. I'll actually have to check that out. It, it, um, they're solid, they're concise, they're really good reviews actually out there. That does sound very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Interesting concept. Yeah, it, um, it is. Looking at uh looking at our time here, um kind of kind of kind of winding down here. Yep. Um but before we do sign off, was there anything else you wanted to bring up on the show? Um, two things, right? We mm -hmm. don't have to go. So our list is still going, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I've gotten, now I'm entering the top 20. You're entering the top three. Yep. So uh, my list ends up on July, no, July, July. January, <laughs> January 10th. Yeah, people, people are <laughs> saying July the way they go. No, it's January 10th where I'll have the, uh, the it, do you know when the smoke and tobacco list uh, is going to finish? Yes, the Smoke and Tobacco Show, uh, um, the Smoke and Tobacco Show, the Smoke and Tobacco Cigar of the Year list, um, the number one cigar of the year will be announced, uh, I want to say Christmas Eve. Okay, Either so you guys, yeah. Christmas Eve or the day before? Um, yeah, so I mean, this oh, wow. week, you're going to know who the top three are, um, who number one is, and then after that's all over, I'm going to roll out my other awards for the industry. Yeah. Um, I want to do Cigar of the Year first, get that done, and then go yeah. into my other awards. Yeah. Um, so after that, just keep an eye out for that because we will be giving some um, specific awards away. Um, I don't want to get too into it, but I'll tease a few. There's going to be um, male person of the year, female person of the year. Um, there'll be a manufacturer. <laughs> um, there's a cigar of the year, which is obviously part of it, but that kind of stands on its own. Um, a couple other things like that. So th there's going to be some other awards. There's going to be some people getting some awards. So we. Um, We'll be probably rolling that out after Christmas and then into January. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah, we, we, have, we have ours coming late January. Those will be announced uh, following the coupe list. There's, uh, that will be coming out the second half of the month, uh, those awards. So we have just started. Uh, we actually just started the process today. So, uh, we, that's the, so my list is the coupe list, uh, but the awards are, are a team list. Everyone on the team does those. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we we're gonna have to we're, next year we're gonna really start figuring out if we're gonna combine lists or not that's still we have such different criteria and the difference with us is everyone has their own brand like on top of things so we don't want to take away from that either so that's why they may end up we may end up just staying individual the way to do it um so definitely uh stay tuned you know as far as that goes um that's always a uh a fun thing but yeah i'll have i'll have the uh the coupe list will be rolling out. Uh, the only days we don't do coupe announcements are Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, and um, the day before July. Uh, July again, January 9th, right? So, um, and but on New Year's Eve is the top twelve news stories of the year article that comes out. So I've been I've been really going hard on that. Um, the other thing is. 
I just want to mention this. And then I have one more thing I want to bring up before the end of the show. Absolutely. Um, January 4th, which is a Tuesday, uh, we're going to have our annual Cigar Aficionado pregame top 25 show. And like I said, this is a, a work that I'm most proud of because I think we have uh, we've done – we really, I think, do a good job at kind of breaking down what we think is going to happen on the list. We're not, we're not right all the time, but we usually have the cigars and the brands nailed. So we had a – Bear and I hit all 25 last year of, of the brands. So that was, that was a big accomplishment. So that's, that will be on January 4th. Um, we have that, and that's a coop – that will be the coop team doing that. Um, so, yeah, that was you know, what's happening there. All right. Yeah, so we, okay. yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, while we're on the topic, uh, how do I want it? So what is, uh, what is your, your feeling on the smoking tobacco list so far? Obviously my list is almost done. So oh, you surprised me on some, but I think they've been pretty solid picks. Um, for the most part, um, you know, today, uh, you can't go wrong with the American, um, no. in the top five, that was a cigar of the year for me. Um, so, and I would say the double Robusto probably is right where it should be. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very, I, I haven't reviewed that cigar yet, so it's not on the list, but I think it's, I think it's been a, a pretty surprising list. Um, there's one brand that I'm just trying to, there's, so there's a couple like Matt, there's could be a couple of butthurt feelings, I think on this list this year, for sure. If there hasn't already been. Uh, for, for some, me or just uh, no for the industry <laughs> like like in, like like in what way like people who are going to be by heart that they weren't on the list yeah yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. because that happens and that's in, in guess what when that happens you've arrived man when people start like saying well, what can we get on the list that that's the best that's the best thing that will happen to you that means you, people paying attention to you you know what the problem is though it, I don't want to name the names because then it's going to be bad, but there's a couple of names. I, I figured I've deduced there's only three spots left and there's a lot of other cigars. There, so. <laughs> it's not easy. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. You know, it's not easy. You know, a lot of people are making a lot of very good cigars, right? You know, it, it, it's hard. It's very, very hard to give all of them top praise. You, you can't. It's just, it's, it's impossible. Um, you know, unless you did like a, you know, you, you know, people do top 25, top 30, whatever, top 20, top 15, but regardless, you know, someone's going to get number one, even if it's, oh, it doesn't matter what order. This is just a top 20 or no, someone's still going to get mentioned as number one or first or last. And people are going to react to that. And, and it's hard. You know, you have to make your best judgment. Yeah. Um, you have to make your best judgment when you're comparing them and it involves a lot of re-smoking and it's not even just the cigar itself. It, it's, it's a lot of re-smoking. Yeah. It, it's a lot of it is the cigar itself, the flavor, the burn, the quality, the construction, the price, and all of it. the market performance is part of it too. You know, I can't, you know, I can't give a cigar of the year to a cigar that might be really good, but like no one's buying it because I mean, the consensus there is that well, people don't really like it because no one's buying it. So well, we Bear and I just had this discussion about like there's a couple of cigars at least that we were talking about that were discontinued, not limited, but discontinued. Yeah. So do you put that on the list? Is the question where and to your point, it's not performing, right? So right. I haven't disqualified a discontinued cigar, but guess what? A discontinued cigar is gonna get a lot less weight is what I'm saying. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how, because it's not out there and it's the same with limited. If, if it's a micro batch limited, I've, I've tried, there's a couple I had this year that was small batch, but for the most part, it's, I think there's a lot more, there's one in the top 10 that was a small release, but it was exceptional. Um, and it may come back. So, and it was available, but enough people still got it. So they said there was like a couple hundred boxes. I think there were more though. So that's why, but yeah, for the most part, I try to stay away from that and stay with more stuff you can get. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that, I mean, that's really all I have to say on it. Um, yep. But I yep. know you said you had another thing. So, yeah. OK, this is a non cigar related topic. OK. OK. So this past uh, about no, let's say a week and a half ago. Sports Illustrated named the Sportsman or Sports Person of the Year. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. All right. And it was Tom Brady. <sighs> oh, God. I forgot about that. Okay. 
<laughs> and I want I want an honest answer. Did Tom Brady deserve it? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Why? I know. I know why. Uh, you the know reason, why? Yeah. The the reason is, um, because for the first thing is, I think leaving New England. I get it. Was a big part of it. Uh-huh. He he left New England in his first year, new team. You know, instantly, you know, even though it's a new organization, all new people, he still he still stood up and took the responsibility to be a leader, you know, and um just made it his mission to play good football, win, help build a good team around him, um, you know, have good players and teammates to work with him. Um, you know, get just just be completely immersed in it's a new team, but like it's business as usual. Good players, good gameplay, good practice, good preparation, all the same fundamentals. He did that. And in his first year, he was successful. They won a Super Bowl title. He brought another Super Bowl title to Tampa Bay. Um, he and, and also within doing that, he proved a few things. He's still not too old because he, he, he still did it. He's still out there winning Super Bowls. Um, not that it's a knock against Bill, but it wasn't, he didn't like need Bill to be successful. It wasn't like, well, he's only good because he's a good coach. No, he's more than capable of going somewhere else by himself and re-immersing himself into a new culture a new environment, new team, everything. It basically starting over from scratch after being a franchise player for 20 years, um, and still being able to do it. So it's not just, well, Tom Brady's only good because he has Bill Belichick and he, you know, he's on the Patriots and they have Robert Kraft and they have a lot of money. They can buy whatever players they want to. And this and that, that's great. New England is a strong franchise team. They tied for most Super Bowls all time with Pittsburgh and, you know, Robert Kraft has done a lot for the team. Uh, Bill Belichick's arguably one of the greatest coaches of all time. Um, but he could still do all those things somewhere else. And the fact he did it the first year was like, it was almost like, message was sent like i'm a strong athlete who it doesn't matter where i am i know how to i know what my job is i know how to prepare i know how to stay in shape i know how to mentally prepare um physically prepare uh i show up i'm a leader you know new group of guys new locker room but i'm still gonna stand up and be like guys like, let's go but it's the whole thing you know he's a leader he's a quarterback he has to be a leader um and, you know, he put in the work. He didn't just go somewhere and be like, all right, well, whatever, it'll come to me. Like he still put it in, like he had something to prove and just focused on football. And that's what, that's what being an athlete's all about. Yeah. It really is. That's what it's all about. Um, so I hope that was enough to answer your question, but I know you probably yeah. have a rebuttal and that's fair. Okay. No, so I'm going to, I'm going to agree. <laughs> I'm going to agree with every single point you said. No, I'm not going to disagree with every point. I, I agree with every, and I'll even say this. He's certainly in consideration for the season that followed, which is now, he's certainly, I think, a contender for MVP. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I, okay. I don't know if he gets it, right? But I w- he certainly, if he got it, you can't get upset, right? I had this conversation with uh, some other people on the MVP talk. Aaron Rodgers was also, I think, a, a strong favorite for MVP. And, and Taylor. Think... And Taylor from Indy, I think, is the other one. Yeah. yeah I, I think I... that... Um, the issue with Aaron Rodgers though, is, you know, he, first of all, he's got, he's got a toe injury, but he's still yeah. playing through, but we'll see how that continues to affect his performance the rest of the way. Cause, uh, he's going to need surgery on it, but he, he doesn't want to do it now. He's going to try to play through it. So that, that could affect his gameplay, but also I think he created a lot of controversy with his COVID related stuff. And I think that that's going to put a bad taste in certain people's mouths about him because in the way that in the way that it will be argued not just on a personal level right the way that it will be argued is he put his team in jeopardy because of the decisions that he chose to make landed him off the field for a week and that yep. week his team lost yep so I think it's, I think it's that, valid. that I think it's you know as a quarterback yeah. being one of the captains and the leaders of the team you know that's you put your team in jeopardy and you gave them a loss because of kind of certain things that you chose to do uh whether or not like 
people agree that's that's a different conversation it's just when you look at it that's just what played out those are the facts that played out so i think that takes him off the list well i mean he's on the list but i think that takes him out of contention to get that mvp title um yes i think someone will look at well you know he he didn't he didn't have all the same boxes that tom brady checked um there's other quarterbacks out there and there's other nfl players out there and not just quarterbacks that 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 could still win that um but i think that's that's one example of how someone could be uh lose that to someone like tom so if i was voting for sports sports person of the year Mm -hmm. and i was doing the ballot tom brady would have been second there's one guy that beat him this year and it's because of the context of his season and the historical ramifications of what happened. We may never see it again. And that's Otani of uh, the angels. What he yes. did. Yes. That's the one where if, if look, if Otani didn't do what he did this year, I would have said, I would vote for Brady. I'm not going to lie on it, but that's the one where I'm just saying he did something that we, uh, we may never see this again. We haven't seen this since Babe Ruth. We haven't seen this yes. in a century. Yes. Happen. Um, so that, and, and I, we've, we've actually talked a lot about this. We think that the angels are like terrible, were terrible at marketing Otani. And I think that had a lot to do with why he didn't win it, but that would have been the one guy that I would say, I, I'll give you everything that Brady said that there's nothing you could dispute on that. Um, and what he did was great, but he still would have got second just because of the uniqueness of that situation of, of Otani's situation this year. I mean, starting the MLB All Star Game as a pitcher and a DH, it was it was just crazy. I mean, it was just it was just it was just crazy. Um, at least the commissioner gave him an award, like a special award this year. The commissioner did something right this year. Uh, yeah, he was an award also, that's very rarely given out. Very rarely given out. He was on the Time Magazine, uh, influential people, uh, which was good. But yeah, I uh, that's the one I would have given to this year. Yeah, you know he, um, you know imagine 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 like other teams out there. You put him on that team, like not not that he would have been better or anything. Just, just he was the, on the Red Sox. Or like, imagine if he was on the Red Sox or the Yankees. Yes, exactly. Game even changer. The, even the Phillies, right? But not so much. Like, I, I get it would be game changer if he played New York. It's just L.A. The L.A. Angels are just. I mean, they're terrible at marketing their players. Mike Trout's another historic player. I mean, he's just an incredible player. And the funny thing, you got Mike Trout and Otani on a team that that didn't even. Wasn't even in playoff contention. Yeah, that's a, with, with one of the best managers of all time and Joe Madden. That that's baffles me what happened out there. So yeah, there's a lot of good personnel on that team over there too, mm-hmm. uh, including the manager. It makes yeah, you go like, yeah, wow. Yeah, exactly. Um, but so, can you ma- imagine imagine Otani playing in L.A. for the Dodgers? Yeah, down the street. Yeah, National uh, League. So when he is pitching, he gets to hit too. Yeah, yeah. forty six home runs, hundred RBIs. And 3.81, 3.18 ERA on the mound. It was you like could, you could have a guy go out there and be pitching a perfect game and also hitting home runs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's it's, like, a, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's like, so, it's like yeah, we can't hit off of him and he's yeah, scoring on us yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, so I'm being careful. I don't want this to sound like Brady hating because it's not. It's just I did think there was a, a unique circumstance this year. Well, that. it's a different sport, so it, it rightfully so. I mean, it's a different, it's yeah. a different way of looking yeah. at it. Yeah, so I, I agree. Yeah, um, I would say those are two very strong people. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know if Otani where he finished in the voting or anything like that. I was kind of curious. Uh, I wasn't surprised that Brady won a little, but not much. Uh, but if like I said, if Otani played on the Red Sox, the, the, he would have won this. I think I better be honest with you. So it would have been a different. Yeah, it would have been different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, especially the way that the Red Sox. I think I think the Red Sox surprised everybody. Yep. This year, um, I know that they they didn't. I think they could have won that ALCS. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously that didn't happen, but. The fact that they were in, they were they were one round away from a World Series, you know, attempt. Um, I think that was impressive. I mean, going into that year, I think people were like, "Wow, oh, they still they got a lot of things to shake out." They made it to the American League Championship Series. That is, regardless of what people say, uh, I, I was surprised that they got through the Rays as easy as they did. Uh, they had a great season to get they to really the ALCS. Did. I was great like, team. "Wow!" You know what? Yeah. That's when I realized, like, "Wow, this team is way better than I than I thought." Even though they played pretty good all season, when they when they beat the Rays and went to the ALCS, I was like, "Wow!" Yeah, this team's good. They did. They had a great year. What a job they did! And I thought, as far as manager of the year goes in the AL, we'll talk about the NL one, but uh, the AL goes uh, Alex Cora. And as much as I'm a <laughs> Gabe Kapler. 
Earn that one. It was the best. Oh, blood. <laughs> Look at <laughs> that. That's not when I'm going. I just love doing this for the for the people watching and listening. Oh, God damn it. I have made a proclamation for next year. Gabe Kapla will not win 90 games with the Giants next year. I think he. I think you're right. I think he's going to win 95. No, he will not win over 90. <laughs> I'm telling you that, that, that he may go like 87, 88 wins. He is not winning 107 games next year. I'm going to tell you that straight up. That will not happen. I'm we should do a baseball show. Yeah, we should. Trump one, yeah. one week we should just be like, you know what? We'll hit some cigar highlights, but this is a baseball show. Yeah, yeah. We'll just do it, and just we can. Yeah. You know what? Maybe I'll invite Terrence Riley on, and then we can just spend like 25 to 45 minutes talking about Gabe Kapler, and I can please have Terrence no. Riley on here. Please no. <laughs> as the as the middleman to mediate please, this. Please no. <laughs> <laughs> I got this one. Coop's already square. If you if, if you're I listening get, and you're not watching, Coop's over there shaking in his chair, shifting his weight, like oh god, Terrence Riley, Gabe Kapler. Yeah, I don't want to do this on the air. Oh, <laughs> he's just Terrence. This no. Coop can't hide behind his keyboard. He actually has to be put on the spot. <laughs> oh, Gabe Kapler. Uh, you know, I have officially uh, as we wrap up, the Giants just lost twenty-one to six. I didn't mind missing the show today, uh, and I've officially put our coach in the Gabe Kapler category joe judge he is a gabe kapler he's now the gabe kapler football i think joe judge is one of the best coaches in the nfl and take him back to new england (laughs) and make him the success of the belichick see how that goes where where is terrence riley right now i want to see this i want to see this post go up i I want you to post this on social media be like all right bye -bye." and i want to see terrence riley swoop in (laughs) so you know the funny thing is um we had a debate about who the greatest giants coach was and he's saying parcells i say coughlin and look, Parcells was a great coach for us. My argument for Coughlin was Coughlin did a lot more with less. Parcells' teams were stacked. Coughlin's teams were not. And that's why I put... And they that's both an have interesting two argument. Goals. Yeah. Uh, but it's nothing to take away from... Par- There's a little sour taste with me of Parcells the way he left the Giants, but it's business. I understand that, right? Um, but, but in general, like I said, you know, playing Parcells, look, I love Parcells. Loved watching Parcells. Uh, both Parcells and Coughlin on the sidelines were entertainment in themselves. Coughlin, you know, going crazy. Uh, Parcells had the opposite reaction. He didn't go crazy on the sidelines. Like when a player messed up and he'd come to the sidelines to try to explain himself, Parcells would like push him away. Get away from me. I don't want to deal with you now. <laughs> yeah. So I remember, I remember hearing, I, was it Lenny Clark? I think I want to say it was like Lenny Clark or somebody. I don't know why Lenny Clark comes to mind. Was, someone was telling a story. They were with Bill Belichick. And they went to dinner or something. They were they were they were somewhere, and someone mistook him for Bill Parcells. And he was like, "What? I'm not Bill Parcells." And he was like, "Bill, tell him who I am." And he's like, "He's Parcells." <laughs> oh, Lenny Clark can I can see. I think it, it was Lenny Clark who told I can that story. See it? Yes. I want to say it was Lenny it. Clark, and I don't remember where I heard him, but I heard him tell that. I, I I'm almost positive it was him, but I I heard that story, and. It was Bill Belichick who goes, no, yeah, he's Parcells. He could play Parcells <laughs> in a movie. There's no question about it. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I could see it, yeah. Yeah. Actually, you want to talk about NFL coaches in movies. Have you seen the trailer for Home Team? Not yet. Do you know what that is? No. It is a movie starring Kevin James as Sean Payton. And it talks Kevin, about the year Kevin he got. Kevin James sus- as, as Sean Payton? And it and it's about when he was suspended by the NFL and he was uh-huh. coaching his son's uh, football team. But they're so opposite. Like, like Kevin James is like Humpty Dumpty, and Sean Payton. <laughs> not, you know, I mean, it's I love Kevin James. I, 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 he's like the ro- modern day Ralph Cramden in my book, right? I just don't see him as Sean Payton. I, I just I'm not putting the connection with the two. When we get off the air, you're gonna go watch the trailer because you'll be yeah. Like, I'm gonna have to do. I just Google what is this? this? Wow. Yeah, I agree. I will agree. Like I've enjoyed Kevin James and other movies, but when I saw he was playing Sean Payton, I'm like, I don't know if that was the best choice. No. And after that, I didn't read it, but it popped up somewhere. Someone wrote an article. Did he lose weight? Did he lose weight or something? No, he's still kind of big. Okay. I'm looking at a picture of him. I can see the sun visor. Look, but that's about it. I can't see any. I just can't. I would never put those two guys in the same sentence. You know what? Regardless, he still looks like Doug from King of Queens to me. <laughs> oh, he's always Doug Heffernan. Doug Heffernan was, look, he was the modern day Ralph Cramden to us. And he was a Jets I mean, fan. Yeah, he was a modern, I mean, exactly. But, but uh, you know, uh, 
I grew up probably watching a lot more of the honeymooners than you did. Mm. And he was really that character that came in for the first time that evoked memories of Ralph Cramden to me. Yeah. Not quite as angry, but there were a lot of other mannerisms he had. Yeah. So yeah, I wanted to I wanted to leave you with that because I'm sure you'll that's you'll a good one. I have to check that. I'm gonna have to check that one out. Yeah, that's a good one. I think it's coming to Netflix. Yeah. Uh, January, I think. Yep. Uh, but no, sure. someone wrote an article and it was casting NFL coaches with uh, Adam Sandler's uh, like movie character, something like that. I don't know, something like that. It was it was like we're on that theme, and it was like like casting all the other coaches. Yep. <laughs> I gotta find people, that. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that Sean Payton was almost gonna be the giant successor to Jim Fossil. He was definitely in in, but they wanted an experienced coach at the time. And Coughlin had a lot of ties to the old Super Bowl teams. But yeah, uh, Kevin, yeah Sean Payton, it, I wonder what would have happened if he coached the Giants. It would have been interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, Sean Payton is out this week on COVID protocol. Yep, hope he's okay. Um, and yep, hope he's okay. Which I'm, he I'm, had, I'm like, he had like last him. year too. Yeah, he did. He had it before, uh, off season. But yeah, you hope he's okay. So Absolutely. Yeah. Also, yeah. you know, while we're talking about it, I do want to just send out um, a – a get well to the Booth family, uh, Matt Booth, Room 101, uh, and his family. They- I saw something. I didn't ask questions, uh, but I just hope he's okay. You know, I want to respect his privacy on it. Yeah, absolutely. I just yeah. he did post that they were uh, not doing well. Yep. Um, we just yep. want to just extend a get well to them because absolutely you know, we, we do love them very much. So it just it came to me. I uh, want to give them a, a sincere get well soon with, with whatever they got going on. Um, you know, um, again, respecting his privacy. Um, so it, it sounds to me the way um, it was told to me. I, I, I have talked to Matt about it, but I, again, I'm going to respect his privacy. I'm not sure, going to reveal, reveal the information. I, yeah. I do know what's going on, but uh, for his privacy, uh, it sounds to me uh, they're going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right. So we just, you know, we hope, yeah, hope for the best. And, absolutely. We hope we get all the way better. Yeah. Yeah, and we just hope that they get better. And yeah. but I, I wanted to throw that out there because uh, yeah. you know we're always thinking about them. So yeah, absolutely. Um, just to get well to them. Yeah. And uh, but that that's gonna do it for me this week, Coop. Yeah, I, me too. Uh, yep. I, th- I think we really covered everything we needed to cover this week. Well, good show. Uh, it was good getting back together. And uh, yep. So uh, look, always look forward to these. These are a lot of fun. Absolutely. Uh, we'll be back again in a few weeks. Uh, yep. As I said before, uh, we have Oliver Nouveau from United Cigars joining us this week for our Christmas special episode, and um, Spinos will return in. Two weeks from today, or two weeks, two Saturdays, I should say. We should be back to Saturday for yep. our next episode. Yep. Um, and then we do have our our holiday giveaway still running. Uh, the first two winners have been crowned, but there's still two more chances. If you head over to our social media, you can find our post with all the rules and all that. You can enter, as well as head to spokentobacco.com and sign up for our newsletter. So that can get you uh, entered into a um, a chance to win. Uh, I think the next prize up for grabs is the yeah. LFD. Yeah. Uh, a special, uh, what is it? I want to say it's the LFD, a specialis oro natural. I thought it was the oro. oro you would know better. You, you know, I think it was the oro. I think it was the oro. Yeah, I think it was the oro. Um, so that's a, a sealed box of that. Uh, that's next up for grabs. So make sure you guys check that out. And, um, as I said, the, the, the top three cigars, double the hero, a squirrel natural. That's what it was. Yep. I'm looking, was. I, I'm, on your, I'm looking at the website. So. That's what it was. Yeah. Um, so don't, don't forget to, to check that yep. out and answer that. Yep. Um, and then as, as we talked about before, are the, the top three cigars will be unveiled this week. So you'll know the winner by Christmas of whose cigar of the year is. I think a lot of people are going to be, I don't want to say surprised. And when I say surprised, I say it because not that it's a bad cigar, I just don't hear anyone else talking about it. Um, but I think a lot of people will be happy with it. Needless to say that. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. I'm really excited. Yep, there you go. Gonna be, I think it's yep. going to be good. I don't want to give it away. Yep, I'm excited. Yep. I'm really excited, but it's, I just, I got to, Gotta hold it in. Even Coop doesn't know. Regardless, I don't know. I don't know. I've I'm offered. To get... I've offered to tell Coop what the next one is. And he's like, "No, I want to be surprised." I'm like, All "Well, right. if it leaks, if it leaks out, <laughs> I don't want to be blamed." We yeah. had a cigar. We had a cigar <laughs> leak out for the first time on the Coop list in 12 years. Uh, it happened. Uh, number 21, which was the Agonorsa leak, Supreme Leap, leaked out on like Thursday. Uh, there was a little internal uh, when the editing was done. 
a the editing wasn't done actually it was accidentally posted <laughs> like uh, so people so, and and there's like three people who follow my list to a t that caught it right away and i'm like yeah i know already we, we it happened it's the first time it ever happened that a cigar leaked out so uh, um, but it was but it was formally announced today yeah because we do these in advance oh like absolutely the, yeah the, the videos are filmed in advance the writings in advance so yeah it, it happened it, it, it's unfortunate but it wasn't done on purpose so guys that is going to do it for the spare notes show number 11 thank you for being here with us today and we'll see you next time Take care, guys.